how's it going everyone uh, we have us a little general electric clock it's one of them little flippers I always called them where the the numbers flip uh, I guess these are worth money nowadays I have no clue uh, this was donated to the channel to for to see if I could fix it or find out what happened to it like I said this is a General Electric model 7-4425A walnut grain finish on polystyrene and made, printed in Singapore <laughs> made in Singapore now the date code is 5647 Now is that the fifth month, sixth day of 1947? I didn't think these were that old. In 47 it would have tubes in it. So I, I'm not sure how to read this date code. If it had, it, it's awful light to have tubes in it. <laughs> but anyway. And I was told, same as always, doesn't work. Uh, this was uh, donated f to the channel from TC the Pack Rat. I told you before, he donates quite a bit of this collectible and, and old electronics to the channel. He gets it, picks it up at yard sales or the thrift stores, you know, and all that, and he knows it's worth money if it works. And if it doesn't work and he can't get anything out of it, you know, selling it for parts then he just asks me if I want it to see if we can't fix it or find out what happened to it uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've had this sitting down on the floor for I don't know two three weeks maybe even a month and I'm trying to remember what he did tell me I think he told me that the, the uh, radio works in it but the clock does not move. So that'll be something we will take a peek at and see if we can't figure out if we can fix it or if and or what happened to it and why it quit working and then we can throw it in a dumpster if it's not any good. <laughs> So I'm going to get you spun around and we're going to plug it in and see what it is doing because you know he's already plugged it in to try it so if he plugged it in and something broke because it was all gummed up that it, it's all the damage is already done. So let's take a peek and oh jeez there we go okay you can move it that way but I don't I don't think it's moving on its own. So, let's take a peek at it and see what the hell we can find out. Yeah, like I said, I, I guess these old clocks like this are, are worth money now. You know, I'm sure just about everything is worth. This old stuff is worth. Somebody's collecting it. You name it, somebody collects it. Okay, she's plug, plugged in. I see a light down in there. Okay. Let's see. On. Tuning volume. Hmm. Maybe nothing works. Music. Alarm. FM. Oh, Jesus, that's stiff. Oh, God. That's what she said. But nothing. Okay, well, maybe I was mistaken when I said that the that the uh, radio worked. 
wait a minute, let me turn my stereo off and get my little feedback from this thing. Okay, now has it been been a minute? Let's see, yeah, one almost. And it's like I said, I, there's a little I can see a light down in there, at least I'm thinking that's a light down and way down inside there. I don't know if you can if you look, there's an orange there it is. An orange light, so I think we're getting power. But no volume. A FM or AM. So this little bugger's kinda dead to the world. And we are where are we at? Okay, music. That's off. Okay, there's on. Nothing. Nothing. And that has not moved. Go around to AM. Okay, that should have tripped the, the alarm. And still nothing. Nothing. Okay. Seems to me like we may have a power problem. Okay. So let's unplug this beautiful piece of machinery of electronics here. And... Let's take her cover off and see what's under her dress. Let's see if there's anything that we can spot right off, or if we're going to have to really get in and do some troubleshooting. You know, like maybe a blown fuse. But I remember when these these came out not this particular brand or model but the the type that flips okay looks like we got a like the yeah we gotta we definitely have to get that knob off of there oh, I hate to pull on it too much let's see if we can get under it She don't want to give up her secrets. Usually they come right up off of her. Ah, there we go. And it's a... Uh, that's a D. Yeah, we little D. And a spline. Somebody was cringing when I was pulling that. I 
I need to see if we can straighten straighten that out. <laughs> when we already ruin it, screw it up. Oh well, we will take a look at that again. Okay, let's see. Here's our power cord. It comes in and goes down below. Oh, no wonder. Doy. Don't mind me. First day. First time I've ever looked at anything. Okay, I think uh, we should inspect a few things here first. Okay. Cap look feels okay. And okay, let me. I'm gonna study this a little bit so I can kind of get a handle. Like I said, this is the first one of these I've I've opened up, so I need to study it a little bit and figure out a few things like okay our power comes in and uh, yeah all right now I kind of looked at it a little bit to see if I did that make a noise when I plugged it in nope that was me hitting the box over here okay and we know it's getting power because we have that little little light. And let's set our our meter here. You, no, you can't see that. Ah, there you are. I'm way to hell over there. Uh, let me see if I can get you in here. There we go. All right, let's, so the two black ones here are the power coming in from the wall, which we have uh, 120, 126. The little motor here that runs the cl um, clock is also a 120 volt clock, or motor. And we have... 127, 128 volts going to our little motor, but I don't see or hear anything running it. So that's the first thing we're going to try and get moving, is that little motor. I unplugged it. And let's pull up the motor here. Screws out. Let's. Uh -huh. Okay. Here's our little motor. Now it's getting power. At least it says it is. So now we can tell for sure if it's spinning. Yes, it is. Okay, now we have power to our motor. Our motor's spinning, but it's not turning our clock. And so we'll unplug it again. 
flip this over. So, are we having a problem in here? Or, let's see, if we turn this. Yep, that. It's actually turning. But do we have a problem in there? Or is our motor not meshed up? Okay, what we what we need to do let's see if it is. Let's see, let me turn that off. Let's look right down on top of it and let's mark. That tooth and then I'll plug it in and let it spin with that little motor nope let's see if we can get that little motor so it, it's not rubbing on anything You can see my mark is over on this side. And the motor does not want to turn again. Let's see how slow. Okay. I think that's our problem. I think our gearbox is going to be okay, or it needs oiled down inside. But uh, I don't see how to get into this orange or brown plastic comes off of there. Okay, I see it's it there's three spots here that it's kinda kinda crimped. Um, I don't know if we can actually get into there or not. Plastic's crimped, kind of goes in, and I don't know if I can get under, and I don't want to ruin anything. I mean, I... Breaks easy. Didn't really want to do that. But there's a little adjustment right here for fast or slow too that I can just see down in there. got to get we got to get in here 
so we can put a little little dab of oil down in that mechanism in the gearbox or whatever There was just no way around it. See, I can save a bunch of it. Okay, and while I am in here cleaning, I got that motor cleaned up, I am going to get my meter out of the way. And this is our, this is the slide switch, the selector switch that, um, changes from you know the music and everything and I am going to clean that and run some oh that's better going to be a lot of people cringing because I'm the way I'm cleaning this stuff up but to me it's the best way I'm not saying this is, it's the right way oh man and there's another the AM FM switches down in there too that's this one right here oh, god we can't that one does not want to move at all and i i don't really want to up with my finger said I really don't want to take the circuit board off because of the the string for the the tuner the string right here that's what's gonna that moves our tuner if we pull that circuit board up out of there The, we'll have to contend with that that string and I really don't want to piss with that I've done enough of those that, that I do not like messing with this with the string here's the AM FM switch right there and if I can 
get that cleaned up. Where it moves. I'm going to back you up a little bit so you can see what's going on. Good. That's the AM That's the switch here. It's so far away and it's just plastic on plastic that it there's so much give that it does not want to slide. break it. So I'm going to work on that and see if I can't get that. Hmm. Nice. See if I can't get that um, loosened up some more so it'll uh, slide easier because um, you're just going to see me flipping it all over the place and so let me see what I can do about getting that freed up. Okay, got got kind of everything all freed up a little bit and now I am going to use a little three and one and just kind of dribble a little bit on everything I can see that moves. do is see if I can't get that to start spinning again. She's a slow. Had to help it help it along. we will let that sit and spin a little bit make sure it's not touching anything and you definitely don't want to touch those two wires over there because that is 110 vibration when I move it, hold it up a little bit. I think we'll let that sit and run for a little bit and see if it loosens up and can run on its own as far as every time you plug it in. Could be that that little motor is just plumb 
wore out. Okay, let me let that run for a little bit. See if we can get her to free up and, and keep running. And every time we we stop it, you know, it is starting up every time I stop it. And it's getting a little better. It's starting up quicker. So I'm going to let it run uh, without it being hooked up to the, to the clock itself. And just... Oh yeah, she's freeing up. Alright, been been going for about 15-20 minutes. And now you can actually feel if you stick your finger on it, you can feel it wanting to wanting to spin. Where before it didn't. It would just kinda you could stop it and then it took a, a little a split second for it to uh, get going again. But I think Alright. That unplugged. Uh, I guess we can put what's left of this dust shield back on it. And That spun back around the way it belongs. Right. Oh, and by the way, it, it did it did move. The mechanism did move. Getting ready to go in for the night, but you know, I really don't want to plug this in and leave it <laughs> leave it running all night out here with nobody being able to watch it. that little motor took off like it was supposed to Wait it out and see if it ha actually moves. And I sprayed down the volume knob, cleaned the switch here. There. This one, I, I have a hell of it just does not want to move it the plastic pin on it is so far away okay we still don't have any radio
Still no radio. And hoo hoo, it turned, it flipped. About the same time I screwed around with that <laughs> that on off knob. I think our clock is working. So that's at least one part of it. Let's see if it'll switch, flip over to 11. It's really weird how those work. That, that roll of numbers is all you know, half. Yep, there she goes. And there's a little little tab up top there that holds the next one in place. And as that turns, it slides down that little tab and after one minute it fall it goes past that little tab and flips down. It's kinda neat how these work. You can see let me get you in here. There we go. You can see that little, see that little silver tab there? It's what holds the next, uh, what do you want to call it? The next flap in place. And then as it slowly turns that, that flap slides down that little tab and after a minute it slides down far enough and then it flips down and then as you move through your minutes it's the same thing it's just slower on the hour okay so I'm gonna go in for the night and we will pick this up tomorrow hopefully and see if we can't get our radio to work. See if we can figure out what's up with our radio. All right, it's been about oh two or three months since we left off on this. Uh, I'm just now getting back to it, trying to trying to do up some things that I have started around here and get some of this stuff done. Uh, plugged it in. It is still still running and keeping time. So we know that's still working, our little motor, but we still don't have any radio. So now it's time to see if we can't take a look at this radio and see what's going on. My first, first thing I, I, I really want to do is to just go in and change the caps in it and be done with it. That way, uh, we can rule out the caps. I mean, they're however old this is. I think this might be a 77. Uh, I did look at that date code. Let's see again. Let's look at the date code again. Uh, yeah, 5647. I don't know. 75, 6th month, 47th week, I don't know how, how you read that one. The date code is 5647. So I'm thinking that's probably 47th week. I don't know. Because it's not a 1947. Alright. Now, I want to get the circuit board up off of here but I'm afraid of the string of losing our string but the more I look at this it looks like our string mechanism is going to be mounted down on the face plate and there's a pin for our tuner this is our little tuner right here a little clear box looks like it's uh, the metal pin goes down through 
into the drive. It looks like if we remove the circuit board, our string, unit, our string mechanism will stay on our faceplate and we can just separate it there. I'm hoping. And I know we're going to have to get that volume knob off of there because it goes down through the circuit board. Oh, I really hate prying on this clear plastic, but it might be the only way. Ah. Another D. This knob can stay because it's mounted. Uh, let's see, we need a good Phillips. Sorry for the low lighting. And I don't even know where I put put the screws and knobs for this. But we'll hunt them down. Should be in a tray or a can or a coffee can. I mean, let's not worry about that. Let's worry more about getting it working. Now let's yes oh I was right okay what are we hanging up on like we need to take our bar off the back here with our big resistor get it loose because the wires go underneath of it there we go yeah see it goes right down in there so let's Try not to disturb that. Now we can actually get at our AM FM switch too and work on work it over. And I feel some heat in it. tricky to work on. But we may have to just grin and bear it. Just kind of get him hanging in a good spot. And then remove our caps. See, the back of the motor has a 76. So I'm betting 75, 76, 77, something like that. I see a lot of 70s.
Okay, we got our caps changed. Uh, let's see, five of them. There was one that I didn't have, and that was a 2.2. A .2. And now we can get at this little AM, FM switch and get a little dielectric grease in it and see if we can get that to move a little better. See, there's too much plastic up through here, so when it comes through the face, you're, you know, you, you can't push it. And from the looks of that, the way that moves, I better take a peek at that and make sure that we don't have any cold solder joints and that could very well be part of our problem let's move everything out of the way I see on the posts out here on the ends they didn't <clears throat> they're not soldered down they're just pushed through the pushed through the circuit board and that gives our switch a lot of flex when we try and try and move it. So why don't we see if we can we'll bend these little feet over onto the circuit board so it anchors it down a little better. make it a little stiffer anyway Let's see if I can get see if I can get this one started That one I may not be able to do anything with. It's buried down. Ah, oh, yeah, I got it. Now, let's see if that helps out any, too. That did. Oh, I see they soldered it from the... <clears throat> from the top side, excuse me. But those look... Well, I can't do anything but help. Let's see if I can get those hot enough to get some more solder on those. Probably not with this tip. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Be a pain in the butt if I have to take this back off. We don't even know if it's going to work. I think once I re-solder these down, well, hmm, that one looks a little grubby. Thank you, too. And then let's...
freshen these up a bit. I know we won't know for sure if it works. We won't know for sure if it was the caps or if it was resoldering our switch, but the caps is something that you should do on these older electrolytic capacitors dry out. Okay, I'm not going to screw this down. I'm just going to, oops, this goes like so. I just want to see, okay, if it's going to give us any sound. Let me see, everything's out of the way. If I plug it in, nothing's going to jump at me. Okay. Moment of truth. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure. Okay, we still have a problem in our radio department. <laughs> so I'm going to get it unplugged. And we will take a look at it. A little better. So we don't have AM or FM. So that means we're not getting any signal at all to our speaker. Okay. So if we're not getting any anything to our speaker, we need to figure out where the where the sound originates from. Let's see here. Our yellow wire is our speaker. Comes up through. It's connected. Then our yellow, no, our yellow comes off of the switch here. That's for the alarm comes by and trips that and turns it on and that's not even working. Let's see. We need to figure out where our sound exits the board. And is it this yellow one? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Comes right into that point there. I am going to take a break for a second and get set up and we can start doing some troubleshooting. All right. I have a little battery powered speaker here for, <clears throat> for whatever. And first thing we're going to test is our speaker and see if we have any We do. Hmm. Okay. 
that tells me we either have a bad speaker or we don't have connection to our speaker underneath there. Let me, <clears throat> I'm going to unplug it before I stick my fingers in there. And we got two screws. And I don't think I have a speaker that small. So I guess we may have to see if we can fix it. Which most of the time there is no fixing of a speaker. Absolutely no room in there. There we go. What oh, fell off? Okay, a little rubber. That's the other rubber. anti-vibration that around and over here so we can actually see what's going on leads. See if we hook it on the wire underneath. Nothing. And hook it on our ground and touch underneath. Nothing. the voice coil is is bad on it because even if we did have something you know even if this the um, volume was real low we'd still get a hum or a crackle out of this so we are down to it being the speaker Checked underneath. Let's just to make sure. Let's go positive, negative. My wire comes on. underneath and nothing ah. 
All right, let me, I want to round up another speaker. Hold on a second. Okay, this is all I could come up with right at the moment, real quick. I just want to make sure one watt that, you know, that it is amplified enough to, to power just a regular speaker. The speaker I was using uh, had a built-in amplifier. So, you know, if it, even if the signal was really light, it would pick it up and play it. Confirms it that we need a speaker. Now I will hunt in earnest to find us a speaker for our little project here. <laughs> our little, uh, I'm not even going to say fix. And somebody's going to say, well, you didn't fix it, all you did was replace. So let me see if I can find a replacement for our speaker. Well, all right. What I did was I went around and I rounded up a bunch of little speakers I had. Uh, this is the original, or one that doesn't work. Um, and I'm almost. I'm gonna say this is a four ohm. It says 45 ohm. <laughs> Probably four to five ohm, one watt. And, you know, most of these 8, 16, 6, and that's probably an 8. These are too tall. They're going to be in the way. Uh, I do want to use a 4 ohm speaker in them, in it. I found a little 4 ohm speaker. And you can see what I did. Let me. It's a little smaller, but it's a little better. It's about as tall as that is. And I didn't want to put any screws or mess up the, you know, the aesthetics or anything of this radio. So I put little brackets in on either side with the little rubber um, isolators on top of it and just kind of screwed everything down and the rubbers holding those little brackets down they're little little speaker brackets and what I did was I just flattened it out it fit right around that peg and screwed it down. It's holding it in pretty tight. It'll still move a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to glue the tabs down to the speaker. And we'll have our speaker fixed. And then we can get it all put back together. But first thing I need to do is I'll get that glued down and I'll show you what it looks like after I get it all glued in and you can scrutinize me then. Uh, we can't test that other speaker to see if it's, you know, if it is 4 ohm or not because obviously it's dookie. And I did test that speaker before I put it in there. <laughs> it works. So let me get that glued in and then we can start getting this all put back together.
All right. Now, yeah, there we go. Driving means freedom. Exploration. Fun. So there we go. Travel. We got her all fixed up. <clears throat> Ready to go. Distracted driving means you know, it, danger. With the with that type of speaker I put in it, you know, it it's okay. I mean it, this isn't a staying alert and staying alive. This isn't a restoration. This is just trying to see if we could fix something. And I'll probably keep this out here in the garage. I'll probably put it up on the shelf and plug it in and I'll have a neat little clock to, to watch. And you know, I won't be using the radio, but hey, it's kind of nice to see that we got the radio fixed. So I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I hope to see you on the next time, next one. And if you like this type of video, hit the like. And hey, consider subscribing if you like this type of stuff. Until next time. See ya.